Hey there, friends. Welcome to The Breaker 2.0, where we are believing for a breakthrough in every area of your life. I'm your host, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, and it is an honor to have you here today. Today, we're going to talk about breakthrough in discernment. And my special guest and friend, my brother in the Lord, Apostle Dr. John Veal, we are going to talk about Breaking through in discernment. Man of God, welcome to the show, The Breaker 2.0. Hey, Miss. Thanks so much, my friend. I'm so excited to be with you. I'm excited what God is going to do and what God is going to do through us. I believe we have a word that will break curses, break things off of people. I'm so excited about being here with you. And I just believe this is this is going to be an anointed time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, as we're doing the show, Breakthrough in Discernment. You know, truly, this is going to be an incredible year, a year like no other. But uh, why is having breakthrough in discernment so important? Talk to us, man of God. This is a year, and I've heard so many people say that exposure is coming, but exposure is already here, as we've seen in our media. I mean, people are being exposed left and right. So I do believe that we need discernment in order to see who's of God and who's not of God. It's very important in this time and this season. We've got to know who we follow. We've got to know who we watch. We've got to know who we labor among. We've got to know if they're of God or not of God. But I really, truly believe that this is the year. This is the year. 2024, that there's going to be exposure like never before, and you're going to see it left and right and all over the place. People are going to be naming names in this season because I'm telling you, it's like the Lord is really, really allowing this to happen so we can separate the wolves from the sheep. Well, it's definitely happening, and I sense that so many people are still blinded, however. I mean, I'm reminded of the verse the Bible says, God gave them over to their own lusts and their own fleshly desires. Some mm. people want to stay deceived. Some people uh, want to continue to drink the Kool-Aid of lies. But there <laughs> yes. is truly a purging and a cleansing taking place in the church and in the world. Yes, absolutely. I, I, we see that. But it's needed. I mean, we need to have the true prophets, apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists to come forth. And I do believe that that is coming. There's a remnant. There's a remnant that is rising up that will not tolerate this foolishness. They won't tolerate what has been going on in the church uh, that's been going on for years. I mean, they won't tolerate it. So I am welcome the, the, the rising of the true call of God to really expose and speak out against the evils that some people are doing within the church realm. Absolutely. Well, God is cleaning house. And, yes. you know, a lot of people love the Jesus that blesses and loves, but also he comes in and he flips the tables of corruption, flips the tables yes. of evil and wickedness in the house of the Lord. Let's go back to this uh, apostle, because we're talking about shaking and exposure. Um, you know, he, there's a few different stances we can take. The Bible says, do not rejoice when your enemy falls. However, we should also rejoice when justice takes place. How do we discern, uh, in a sense, celebrating the justice, the vindication of God, yet also at the same time, people, maybe they're being exposed or deemed as predators or, or they are true false prophets. How do we have the balance of justice, yet mercy, judgment, yet compassion? I mean, scripture gives us evidence of how to do that. I mean, first you go to a person, you, you warn them, you talk to them. If they don't listen, you bring witnesses. And, and if they don't listen still, you bring it publicly. And I believe a lot of stuff that is done publicly should be addressed publicly. If if people are bold enough to, to profit lie and say all kinds of things over public access, then we should be able to, to confront that. We should be able to, uh, to come against that because it's very important to guard the people of God, especially uh, new sheep uh, that are just coming into uh, uh, Christ. They need to be warned about these false shepherds, false prophets, false apostles, because some people are just doing this for lucre. I mean, for money, for wealth, for mammon. And that's a problem. That's a problem. We, I, I just believe we're, we're coming into an era where people are going to be more real than they've ever been before. 
before. In fact, I believe the fear of the Lord is coming back to the earth realm. Something is going to happen where people will run to the church. They'll run back to the church and we don't have time for foolishness. We don't have time to play games. I mean, it is so serious because we look at how short life is. We don't have a lot of time to address these things. We don't have a lot of time to do a lot of time to do the work of the Lord. So it's very, very important in this season to do what thus saith the Lord. Well, you're absolutely right, Apostle. The days are getting shorter and shorter as we are drawing closer to the day of God. So, you know, it's not time for games. It's not time for nonsense. And God is addressing these things. Uh, But let me ask you this. How do you discern if somebody is a wolf in sheep's clothing or is a true, genuine man and woman of God? Uh, We understand the Bible says people are masquerading as angels of light. There's many similar common characteristics, but it's veiled to the natural eye. So how do we discern this apostle in these days of trickery and deception? And see, that's what we have to be in this season. We've got to be fruit inspectors. That's what's going to tell it all. Because if you watch somebody long enough, they you'll find out what's in them. I always say that that if I listen to you long enough, I don't have to judge you. I can judge you by the words that come out of your mouth and know what you're about. And that's what's important. We have to be listeners. We have to be active listeners in this season to really hear what thus say the Lord, because it would be so clear. It'd be crystal clear if it's God speaking to an individual or if it's the enemy, because God will line up with his word. But we see so many people speaking things that are not according to the word of God. They're not foundationally based on the word of God. And that gives you uh, evidence right there. That gives you, you know, where you can say, okay, well, this is not God and this is of God. But what I'm seeing is a people rising up that will not tolerate this foolishness and they will not tolerate the church being used as a club, for instance. I've seen that over and over, all these worldly songs, terrible lyrics. I mean, it's it's bananas and it looks terrible. And some of the churches look like clubs and that's a bad thing. That's a terrible thing. We've got to get back to the old landmark. We've got to get back to holiness and doing it God's way. Amen and amen. Jesus loves the sinner, but he doesn't condone the sin, of course. And it's so important for us to discern, distinguish how to separate the two different entities. Um, I love what you said, Apostle. You said we must be fruit inspectors and we must be able to discern the fruit. You see, uh, the Bible says a way seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to to destruction. So it seems right. It looks right. It has an appearance, but it's actually not. Um, How do we inspect fruit? What are some telltale signs of what the fruit actually is? Well, motivations. You look at when people have uh, money lines and uh, they always talk about money and wealth and all these things. I mean, that can be an indicator that something's wrong, right? And I've always... I've always uh, uh, looked at it in terms of false gods, right? There's a false god, I believe, called self. And this false god is of Satan, is of the enemy. But a lot of people serve this god called self. And so when they start to serve a god called self, the fruit is going to be rotten. The fruit is not going to be uh, uh, right. It's not going to be prosperous, right? Because they are worshiping themselves. And that's the spirit that has overcome the nation, overcome the world. This spirit called this devil, this this false God called self. And so many people serve self. And when they serve self, their fruit will be rotten. The, 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 the lack of produce will be, will be evident because they are serving themselves. So when we see people that constantly are talking about me, 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 just like Satan talked about, I will do this. I will do this. I will do that. That's a clear indicator that they are serving a God called self and their fruit will not be right at all. Wow. That's powerful. Well, You know, Jesus said that, um, you know, the devil, evil spirits will will not acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Right. Mm. And so that's Mm. one of the indicators. But I I like what you're saying. Listen to the language, their vernacular, Mm -hmm. because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And truly, the mouth is just the amplifier of Mm -hmm. the motive, the intention that's Mm -hmm. on the inside of people. So you may not discern what's on the inside, but you could hear what's going on the inside. You can listen and hear what's actually taking place on who they are. 
Right. That's so true. That's so true. Uh, Proverbs 11 and one says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Right now, the church is out of balance because we've got so many witches that have infiltrated the church disguised as prophets. Right. And it has caused the church to operate in areas of new age or the occult, which is not good because we see a lot of stuff that is not biblical being done in church. You know, things that had come from the outside, inside. But again, I, I did a podcast a couple of years ago and the Lord showed me, he showed me prophets coming into the church disguised as excuse me, wishes coming into the church disguised as prophets. And that's a whole problem right there because a lot of times we just look at their gifts and not their character. We've got to look at their character. We've got to look at, at their history. What have they, What were they involved in? What did they come out of? Because I've had that happen in my church where I've discerned witches. I, 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 you know, they fooled me initially because I thought they were prophets, but the Lord showed me. That's why it's so important to really get into a position of listening, a position of genuflection, where you're, you're in a position of hearing from God, because a lot of people, when they pray, they don't just listen. I mean, excuse me, they don't just, just they don't, listen enough. They don't, they don't listen to what God is saying. And that's very, very important because they talk so much. They don't get that time to listen. And that's what we need to do in this season, really hear what the Lord is saying. Well, wow, that's powerful. Well, again, you're talking about character. You're talking about fruit and, Amen. you know, morality is one sign of who a person is, right? Uh, however, you know, in different cultures, there's different uh, values of what being a moral person is all about, but that's why we must pray. And uh, I, I fear, Apostle, that too many people are speaking out too quickly or mm -hmm. speaking out too slowly because right. there's a lack of prayer. But when we take it to the Lord in prayer, he will give us the right words, the right time, and he will show people's true colors and he will show the faces behind the masks as one of my friends says, Minister Natasha, but we must pray because people can act kind and act like a good person with benevolence face front, but on the inside, they're ravenous wolves. That's scripture. That's so true. And that's what we're seeing. I mean, we're seeing that. We're seeing uh, the enemy using puppets, plants in the church to lead the church astray. And that's that's not a good thing. But again, I really believe that the fear of the Lord is necessary for this next revival, for this next move of God, because I believe so many people have lost the fear of the Lord, the respect for the church based on what they've seen. We've seen all kinds of scandals. We've seen great men and women of God fall, you know, and that's why I'm hoping with the people that are accused, the great men and women that are accused now, I'm praying it's not true. Because we can't take another hit like this to the body. And we, if we do, we're going to lose more respect. And, and, and people have less less reverence for the church, which is not a good thing. Well, you're absolutely right. The fear of the Lord is coming back like never before. Friends, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, myself and Apostle John, we are going to talk about how discernment will protect your life. See you soon. Hey there friends, it's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, and I want to invite you to prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner with me and Ben Lim Ministries. You see, we are committed to seeing the Great Commission fulfilled in our time through our online social media events, and as well through our revivals and our missional efforts through our crusades. You see, we can reach the world with your help. Consider becoming a partner with me and Ben Lim Ministries. Thank you, and God bless. And welcome to our show, The Breaker 2.0, where we are believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. It was going to need a lot of work, and I don't mean like remodeling. This, this thing needed to be resurrected. Do you feel like it took more faith, or it took a different amount of faith, different type of faith? And I, I'm just a very naturally bubbly, optimistic individual. I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, it's hope deferred. You know, it's your new season. You said you were aggressive. And you know, the Bible says that those uh, who advance in the kingdom, they take it by force. There is an aggression. There is a power of force. And the more an individual seeks the Lord and the more they pursue their relationship with Jesus and just 
cultivate that relationship with Jesus Christ, what's going to happen is they're going to grow in wisdom and in stature. Well, absolutely. Uh, when you're in your assignment, the anointing's there. You thrive. Because we may be in the world, we are not of that world. God repositioning people in the chessboard. The proud is being humbled. The humble is being lifted up. Where the Lord told Abraham, get up, leave your father's house, and go to the place I'm going to show you. And by the way, he was 75 years old at the time. That's crazy. A lot of people don't mention that, but I find that just fascinating. People of God, that was Dr. Jolyn Whitaker. No introduction, conclusion needed. Get ready to go to a whole new level and dimension in your walk with Jesus. With the Breaker 2.0, where we're believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. We will see you very soon. God bless. Apostle Dr. John Veal, and we are talking about breakthrough in discernment. I believe God's going to take your discernment to a higher level today. Apostle John, before our break, we were talking about how discernment will protect us. And unfortunately, too many people, they've shipwrecked their faith. Maybe they've allowed an influence or a minister or somebody to come in and that Jezebel spirit has destroyed their life. How does discernment protect us and our family? Uh, it's very, I mean, it, it does in a myriad of ways. Uh, you look at the gift of discerning of spirits. And when you think of it, you think of it as something that can't be enhanced. It actually can be. It can be activated and it can be strengthened. And I believe it comes through prayer. It comes through listening to God and hearing what the Lord is saying, because that's what really happens when you are discerning something. You're just hearing God, hearing God say, hey, this is not of me or this is of me. One particular uh, uh, experience that I had was the Lord really spoke to me about going to a particular church to hear an individual. And the Lord was saying, well, when you go, this person's going to prophesy to you, but it's going to be off. It's going to be wrong. And so sometimes we have a tendency to kind of put God to the test because you kind of want to see if it was going to happen the way he says. So I went on and went. I shouldn't have gone, but I went. And this man of God, me and my wife went and he called up my wife, gave her a really, really great word, really strong word. But then he calls me up. And he starts giving me this word. He says, I see uh, water falling from the sky and it's hitting a rock. And that's not a good thing. And I'm looking at him like, what do you mean? Right. And so he says, I see you getting the results of an ant in this season. Uh, uh, things are not going well. And it was one of my most prosperous season. I was traveling all around. I was doing all these things. So it's really a great, great season. And so after that, I made the mistake of letting this man lay hands on me. He laid hands on me. And of course, he told me I was going to get $2 million. I'm still waiting on that. But when I left, when I left, I battled something all night long. I battled some spirit because something had gotten on me or transferred to me through the laying on of hands. And, and I fought with it all night. I prayed it off of me. Thank God. But that's why we have to be careful. We really need to listen to God when God is telling us not to go somewhere, not to get ministered to by someone. Right. And definitely not to let uh, let them lay hands on you. That's why I'm very careful with letting anyone lay hands on me because they could not even know it. And they can be carrying a spirit and that spirit can get off on you. And that's exactly what happened to me. But I did discern it. God did show me. But guess what? I didn't listen. And that's what people need to do in this season. They need to discern. But then when they get the discernment, listen to God and take action. How many times apostle is God actually trying to get our attention? The Lord is so gracious. And you see all throughout the history of the Bible, throughout Israel, he sends prophets, listen, listen, I'm trying to warn you, I'm trying to help you, trying to protect you, but we continue to reject the word of the Lord. We need to have our ears and our eyes open, people of God. We need to be attentive to the ways that God speaks because he's trying to catch our attention. He is Paracletos. He is our helper. Isn't it interesting, yes. Apostle, because in a world today, where it seems to be so tolerant, we say, mm -hmm. that's not nice. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. the, the man, the man of God, the minister who wants to right. pray for you, but is he going to pray on you? P-R-E-Y right. instead of pray. Come on. Yes. Um, but in a world today where it says tolerance and kindness, how important is it for us to realize that we need to 
follow the gut feeling, the spirit of discernment on the inside, draw boundaries and a line of the sand instead of just being open season for anybody and anything to uh, lay hands on us or to try to come into our inner space. Is that what, well, the Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly. Now it does mean I've interpreted as always interpreted as, you know, not allowing a novice in, you know, to get into a position with that they're not ready for. But I do feel like it can be taken another way. I mean, you don't let anyone lay hands on you that God is telling you not to. That's where it's so important. And that's where listening comes in, in, in place. See, a lot of people will hear God, but don't listen to God, if that makes sense. You can hear something and not really be listening. I mean, have you ever talked to someone and you're like, well, what, you know, what did you say? You know, you can hear the noise, but you didn't uh, distinguish what they were saying. So it's important to really not just to hear the, the noise of God, but hear the words of God and then follow suit. Do what God says do. That will protect you because your soul is at stake because you don't know what Thing, what people are trying to impart to you. That's why I always tell people when someone prays for you, listen to every word. Do not start speaking in tongues or falling out and shouting and screaming and they're still talking because they could be releasing demons into you. You need to listen to every word so you can say, hey, uh, no, I don't receive that because amen means so be it. So every time you say amen to something, you're saying so be it. So what if they're speaking curses over your life? What if they're speaking cancer over your life? And you're amen, amen, amen because you're in an emotional state. I say when someone prays for you, please make sure that you listen to every word. When they prophesy, listen to every word. Because some words you don't need to receive. And you've got to tell them, hey, I don't receive that. And you have to be bold because the righteous are as bold mm-hmm. as a lion. And friends, yes. it's okay for you to reject prayer. I remember mm-hmm. many times people have asked me, and you know, the fact that they would even ask, they're they have a maturity enough for you know to right. even ask that question because some people presume, which is also a spirit of witchcraft and rebellion, a presumptuous spirit. Absolutely. Um, but you have all authority and the right to protect your space and to protect the atmosphere that God has given you. Now, man of God, there's so much uh, deception and falsivity. There's fake news, right? Mm. Even with AI technology, there's so much mm. falsivity going out today. Yes. How can we activate the gift of discernment? How can we strengthen this? You said this mm-hmm. earlier. How can we strengthen this gift, the spirit of discernment, the discerning mm-hmm. of spirits? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's relatively simple. I mean, the main thing you have to do is know the voice of God. The only way you're going to know the voice of God is to listen to the voice of God. For example, if you call me, when I hear your voice, I know you well. You're my friend. So I know this is Dr. Ben Lim on the phone. It should be the same way with God. You should know exactly who's talking to you because guess what? Satan, when he speaks to you, he doesn't go, ah, ah, he doesn't talk like that. He talks like God. He sounds like God. In fact, if you think about it, when, when the Lord does talk to you, guess who he sounds like? He sounds like you. And the reason why he sounds like you is because he's a spirit and he speaks to your spirit and your spirit translates, right? So if you have a country accent or you have a, 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 a just an accent, period, that's how you're going to hear God sound. You know, he's going to sound just like that, right? So that's what happens. So you've got to know God's voice. When I prophesy, the only thing that I do is listen to God's voice and say what he says. That's what's so important. So when you hear God and God is saying, no, this is not of me, we need to listen. We need to listen and do what God says do, because that's how we can strengthen our discernment. Not only that, but also reading the word of God, uh, staying before the Lord, fasting in prayer, helps you to hear his voice much more clearer. But I look at it with discernment it's just simply just listening to god's voice and and you know applying what he's saying and do what he says do amen and amen know the voice of the lord number two know god's word and of course number three to fast and to pray i love what you said man of god the bible says let your yay be yay and your nay be nay let your yes be yes and your no be no i believe in this season there's going to be some no's and sometimes the yes. biggest no is the biggest blessing. Do Come not on. consider a no a curse, but mm-hmm. the no is actually a great blessing. I feel the Lord right now. Apostle mm-hmm. John, I believe the Lord is saying yes, but he's also saying no to certain things. And he's mm-hmm. giving us the discernment to decide because your discernment determines your destiny. God's about to take people higher. Man, I, got, I can feel the fire of God right now. Before mm-hmm. we... Pray and just release 
prophetic decrees over people. Is there any last thoughts as we're talking about breakthrough and discernment? I just want to say something about what you said about Noah. I love that. Joyce Meyer, I believe, said that Noah is the most anointed word in, in our language, right? And no, the word no can cause demons to manifest. <laughs> you probably experienced that. You tell someone no and this demons start to manifest because they get upset. So I love that. There is a blessing in no. There is a blessing in no. And I just I just want to say to the people, this is your season to declare and decree. Uh, you got to declare and decree based on what you discern, which is very, very important because you've got to know what's of God. There's so many people that are sowing money into uh, time, into uh, uh, people that are not of God. What is your discernment telling you? There's some people in church right now and you're getting a, a, a feeling like, hey, this is not of God. Don't disregard that feeling because I believe God is speaking to many people in this hour and he's saying what's of me and what's not of me. In fact, there's there's a line being drawn in the spirit where you're going to have to be on one side or the other. You're not going to have to uh, you're not going to be called to go to someone that's just popular. You're going to be called to go to someone that's anointed, that's called of God, because I believe they're they're raising up right now. There's a remnant that's raising up right now that I'm excited about and I feel the fire of God. And I believe even watching this broadcast, there's oil on this broadcast. And I believe the oil is getting on you. And I believe that gift of discernment that's in you already, it's going to get sharpened just by listening right now. I'm telling you, God is doing something amazing in this hour. Yes, the fear of the Lord has come back or is coming back to the church, to the world, praise God. And I'm believing God is going to do something phenomenal in you. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Your discernment is going to another level. And listen, Listen to what God says, and you'll find yourself in the right place. In Jesus' name, Amen. Oh, I'm excited. You got me fired up. The glory is flowing, and friends, I hope you receive those prophetic words and declarations over your life, man of God. Uh, before we close, this is such a rich finish to our show today. But how can people find you, follow you? Uh, do you have anything you want to talk about very quickly in the next minute? Oh yeah. Um, I, they can go to my website, johnville.org. They can find me on Facebook under Prophet John Ville or even John Ville. I've got a couple of books out, Supernaturally Prophetic, Supernaturally Delivered, uh, Racism. I have another book coming out in 2024 this year where I'm really, really excited about. I believe it's going to help a lot of people and bless a lot of people, but I, I'm just excited about what God is doing. So if you want to connect with me, I would love that. Wow. Praise God. That spirit of discernment is is like the word of God. It divides yes. the bone and the yes. marrow, the soul and the spirit. So get ready, my friends, even more separation, which will prepare you for your elevation. Apostle John Veal, God bless you. Thanks so much for being on the show. What a blessed broadcast. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. My pleasure. Wow, people of God, wasn't that an incredible finish? You could feel the fire of God. I'm feeling the power of Jesus right now. Friends, there is a grace to discernment. And when you embrace the gift of discernment, it will save your life. It will bless your life. And it will be a blessing to all of those around you. Today, my special guest, Dr. Apostle John Veal and I, we talked about breakthrough in discernment. I am your host of The Breaker 2.0, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. And I hope that this show has blessed you. We will see you very soon. Until next time, God bless.